In this video, we're going to be implementing the pivot point indicator using Python, which allows us to calculate potential points of resistance and support using data from a previous bar on a larger time frame. So for an example of this, we can look at trading view here, where I've got a one hour chart using the weekly resistance points. So how this works is you've got a pivot point, which represents the central point. This is labeled P. Then you've got R1, which labels the first potential point of resistance. We can see this line here. And then you've got S1 below it, which shows a possible point of resistance. These values remain constant for the full week because that's the larger time frame that I chose. And then at the end of the week, the pivot points are recalculated using this week's values. And those will be the new pivot points for the next week. You can go as high or as low as you want with the resistance and support points, although typically you won't need beyond R2 or S2. There are quite a few different methodologies to calculate these pivot points. If you go to the indicators and then go to pivot points standard, and then go to the help center. We can scroll down and that will give us a few different formulas that you might want to consider. We've got the traditional, which is tried and true, been used for decades, and then Fibonacci, Woody, Classic, DM, Camarilla. I'm going to be implementing the traditional logic, but it'll be very easy to change it to whatever you need to. As we can see, all of the calculations rely on high lows and closes of previous bars. The timeframes of those bars are determined by this algorithm on TradingView. These are the ones that TradingView recommend. So if we're plotting say one minute bars, the time frame for our previous bar is going to be one day. So we're going to look at what was the previous day's price action like and calculate the pivot points based on that. But if we're plotting say hourly data, then we want to look at the past week. Again, these are just conventions. You can pick whatever time frame you want. Now that we know what the pivot point indicator is, let's go ahead and implement it in Python. The first thing that we'll want to do as usual is to get our data. I'm using Bitcoin data from Yahoo Finance, but all we really need is two data frames of open, high, low, close data one of them on a larger time frame than the other. So I've got weekly data and hourly data. So in my particular case, I've got Bitcoin data starting from the 2nd of January 23 up until the 13th of February with an interval of one week. I've also gotten rid of the adjusted close and the volume columns because they don't really mean anything to us. We don't need them for anything and you want to pay attention to the starting dates. As TradingView starts the calculation for the beginning of a week on Monday, so that's why I'm using the 2nd of January, so that all of these weeks will be Monday to Monday to Monday to Monday. And that way, at the end, when I've calculated everything, I'll be able to verify my resistance points against the ones provided by TradingView. Then below, I've got the hourly data, in this case, just one week in the middle of that weekly data. And these are the bars we're actually going to plot along with the resistance points calculated from the weeklies. The way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to calculate the resistance points on the weekly time frame. I'm then going to merge that. I'm going to do a table join onto the hourly bars, which will make it very easy for us to plot and without having to plot lots of horizontal line segments, which can get very messy in Plotly. So let's take a stock of our data. So I have the weekly data. And from there, all I need to do is to transcribe that formula that's provided by TradingView to calculate our pivot points, resistance, and support points. And we're going to add those as a new column for each individual week. So there'll be a pivot point column, a resistance one column, etc., etc. So that's all of our raw columns calculated. We've got the pivot point, the resistance points and support points 
all calculated in separate columns. Now, as per the formula, the pivot points need to be calculated based on the previous week's values of open, high, low, close. And the way we did it, we're calculating it based on this week's values. And so our current data set here is exhibiting look ahead bias because we're using data that we don't have at the beginning of the week, like the close value, to calculate an indicator that will be used during the week. To fix this is quite simple. All we have to do is shift all of these columns up by one. So this value here for the pivot point will actually be the pivot point value on this week and the value for this week, this week, etc., cetera, et cetera. Pandas has a very simple function for doing this. It's just called shift and you give it a number. So you want to shift everything one on. So I'll do that now for each column. And if we go ahead and print out those values, we now see everything is shifted along one. So this week's pivot point values are now calculated using this week's pivot point values. To clean this table up, what we can do is to apply drop NA on the table. So this row doesn't actually give us any meaningful information anymore. We can just go ahead and remove it. That way it doesn't bother us later on when we're doing some kind of table join. At this point, what we need to do is to append these extra columns with the pivot point data onto the hourly table that we had earlier. So for any bar that goes between the 9th of January and the 16th of January, we want to use these values. And then anything between the 16th and the 23rd, we want to use these values. Having these values joined onto the smaller time frame table is not only helpful for graphing as we're going to show here, but it's also very helpful if you wanted to backtest this indicator because you'll need it on the time frame that you're actually trading. Now to make this simpler for us, the joining process, we're going to get rid of the open, high, low, close columns. So I can just rerun this cell, except I'll drop the open, high, low, close columns. That way we don't end up with an extra set of columns being joined onto the hourly data. So there we go. I've dropped the open, high, low, close by only selecting the pivot point columns. And now we're ready to perform the merge. The join that we'll want to use is called an as of join. So it will let us look at the hourly table and think what is the value of the pivot points as of this moment in time, interpolating between these two different rows. It'll become a bit more clear once we look at it. So this is the final product, which we'll want to be plotting. That's why I've called it plot data. We're using the merge as of function, as I mentioned before, where our hourly data goes on the left-hand side, our weekly data goes on the right-hand side, and then we set left and right index to true because we want to join on the index. If your dates are a column in the table rather than the index, you want to select those as the columns you're joining on rather than using the index as I am. So we can quickly test whether this worked by selecting some arbitrary candlestick. So we'll look at this one from 2 a.m. on the 1st of February. That one has a pivot point value of 23366. So let's go check that this is accurate with what we have in the weekly table. So 23366 is the same one on this value, which represents the week from Monday the 30th of January up until the 6th of February. So that's looking right in terms of alignment. These have been matched properly, which is what we want. And now we can try plotting this out. As it's often a good double check, it helps you find any logic errors in your code. If you plot things out compared to trading view, we can see if there's any difference. We'll first want to import Plotly and of course install it if you don't have it already. And then Plotly has a nice interface for plotting candlestick graphs. 
and creating a figure object based on that. So we just put the open high low close values in, a name if you want to make sure that the legend is correctly labeled, obviously provide the index so that it can generate the timestamps and Jupyter should let us just plot this figure out. There we are, that's the default look of a plotly candlestick graph. You may want to rid yourself of this range finder, I don't find it very useful. To do that, it's just one line. We just update the layout and say x-axis range slider visible equals false. That gets rid of that for us, frees up a bit more space. Now, of course, this is still a boring candlestick chart. We want to add our new pivot point indicator on there. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to plot a scatter graph, strangely enough, but we're going to use markers mode. So none of the points get connected together and that will create a nice effect to draw our pivot points and lines. So I'm adding a new trace to this existing figure object that we created up here. And then I'm specifying a scatter graph using the indices from our plot data data frame. And the Y values are going to be the pivot points. So specifically the pivot point column as opposed to S1, S2, S3. We'll get to those in a second. And then for color coding purposes, I've made this orange. And if we run this, we'll see what that looks like. So we've got a nice orange line here and we can see it moves as the weeks progress. I'll make it a bit bigger so it's easier to see on video. Maybe move it to size four. So the dots are so large at this point, they're almost forming a line. And if we go down here, we can check that it's moving on the right candle. So as the week begins, we shift to a new resistance line, which is what we wanted. Now all we have to do is repeat this plot for every single resistance line that you want to draw on there. So thanks to some quick copy pasting action, I've got R2, R1, S2 and S1. All I'm doing is copy pasting this original plot and then changing the Y value, the color and the name. Let's go run it and see what it looks like. I've color coded them so we can see what's happening. Red for support, as that generally means we're heading in a bearish direction and green for resistance. You can turn them on and off using the Plotly legend over here. And at this point, since we're in an interactive notebook, it's really quite easy to change the range of data that we want to look at. So if I just scroll all the way back up to the top, Instead of getting hourly data for this time frame, I can instead get hourly data from, let's say, the 25th of January, re-download that, and then the only thing we'll have to recompute is our plot data down here, and then draw that on out. Let's quickly compare a couple of these values with TradingView just to check that everything's okay. So the support value on February the 2nd is 22813. Let's try and remember that. So February the 2nd, 22813. So we're off by maybe $100 or roughly $80 which is acceptable considering we're using a different set of open, high, low, close data. Let's check the pivot point. Maybe that one will be the same. So two, three, three, four, four. So we can see that one's very much the same. It's only a $20 difference. If you want to verify that these are exactly the same, you want to export the data from TradingView, which you can do if you have a premium account. You can export the raw candlestick data to verify that. There's also a free tool for exporting the data, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.